What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about how to lay out a room using a two-dimensional diagram in SketchUp. So before I get started I do want to take a second to thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon as you know is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So uh, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, you want to support what I'm doing, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so this right now is the space that I'm in that I'm using to create YouTube videos. So you can see how I've got my desk with my two monitors, um, I've got my computer over here, and then in the background you've got this kind of giant bunk bed type thing. That's always been there in the background of my videos, and it's just because we don't really have another room for it, and we didn't have anything to put here in its place. Um, so it's just kind of been sitting in this room. It's nice to have when you have guests, but now we have enough space that we don't really need it anymore. So what we're doing is we're going to replace this with a um, with a couch. And so in order to do that, I'm thinking probably what's going to make sense is going to be to kind of take my desk and my computer and swap it over to this other wall and uh, just kind of move everything around. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to try that in SketchUp and see what everything's going to look like. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to do a few things. And so the first thing we're going to do, and I'll bring up the image, is I have... Alright, so I have gone through and I have measured the room using a tape measure. So I've got an idea of where the room is. I also came in here and I measured the... Um, the baseboard heat because my house has baseboard heat and that kind of hangs off the wall here as well as kind of the thickness of the trim the location of the closet door all of that different kind of stuff and so the first step that we're gonna follow is we're gonna bring all of this into SketchUp so we're gonna kind of rough out our room so let's start off with that and I'm gonna drag this image off to my other monitor so I'll be looking at it while I model um, but I won't have it up here and if you guys want, I can upload that image somewhere. It's basically just a, uh, it's basically just a rectangle that I drew with measurements on it, though. So I don't think you really need it. But let me know in the notes down below. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off, and we're just gonna model our walls based on what's shown in this image. And so what I'm gonna do is I went ahead and I measured the full length of one of the long walls and it's at about 117 inches. So I'm gonna draw a wall that's 117 inches long. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break that wall up a little bit into the individual sections. So like for example, this is kind of the entry area. And so I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna draw an 81 inch line right here. And basically what I've done is I've taken measurements to the edge of the trim. And so in this room, the trim's a little bit bigger. And the only reason I'm incorporating the trim in this case is because it's wider and it may get in the way of the furniture. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two and a half inches for the trim. And then I'm gonna draw another 30 inches for the door. And so when I did that, what it did is it broke this line up. I'm going to go ahead and erase this line out because that's basically going to be my door. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here with my closet door, which you didn't see in the image, but there's a closet over here in the corner. And so that's going to start off and it's going to be two and a half inches for the trim. And then I'm going to draw another 51 and a half inches. And then I'll do another two and a half inches for the trim. And then I've got 83 and a half inches. So you can see how I'm just kind of working my way around this space. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase this line out for the moment because that's where my closet door is gonna be. And I may end up coming back and doing that differently. I haven't really decided yet. But one thing we can do is you don't need to put this wall in based on measurements, all you have to do is use inferencing. So you just tap the L key to activate the line tool. You just click on this point and move your mouse over here and you can hold the shift key to lock that to the red axis. And I'm just gonna move my mouse until it lines up with this origin point. And then I can click. So you can see how I was able to set the length of this line without actually clicking on this point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click and just kind of close this off. And actually what I might do 
for right now is I might go ahead and fill this back in. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna kind of extrude this into 3D in a little bit, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna offset this out a little bit. So in this case, we'll assume these walls are about three inches thick. And the depth of the walls isn't really that big of a deal. But what I'll do is I'll come in here, and since I've already set the thickness of these lines, what I can do once I've done that, and by the way, I activated the offset tool by tapping the F key, and you can see how when I tap the F key and then move my mouse into this space, it gives me this kind of offset um, option. So I can click, set a thickness, and then uh, hit the enter key. So that's how I offset that to three inches. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill out the doors. in here. So for right now I'm just kind of indicating where the doors are. And so what I have now is I have a space that's the same size as my room. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up using the move tool and I'm going to rotate it using the rotate tool. And the only reason I'm doing that is so that whenever I rotate out of here like this when I click the top down button, um, this will have everything kind of oriented the way that I want to have it. And so for right now, this is probably the simplest way that you could do this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and right click and reverse the faces within my walls. But what I have is I basically have a room or a space laid out where I can start adding some things in here. And so if you want to be very simple about this, all you really need to do in this space is just draw some two-dimensional objects that are kind of sized the size of the things that you're going to put in your room. So like for example, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my mouse across my room and I'm going to go ahead and select it all. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to make that a group. And so the reason I'm going to make that a group is because I'm going to put these other things that I'm going to be moving around into this room and I want to... Um, I want to kind of have the ability to um, do that without any of my geometry merging. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this group in the outliner and we'll just call this room. And if you use the outliner to keep everything organized, then you don't have to be clicking around trying to get in the right group later, anything like that. So just organize your groups as you go. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an object for my desk. And so I measured my desk and it's 74 inches by 25 and a half inches. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to use the rectangle tool. So I'm going to tap the R key and I'm going to move this this way. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in 74 comma 25.5. And what that'll do is that'll draw a 74 inch by 25 and a half inch rectangle. So, and then once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and reverse my faces, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a 3D text object in here. And so I'm just gonna call this desk, and go ahead and just click place. And I'm gonna put that on this object. And so the other thing I might do is I might also add the dimensions in here. So using the uh, dimension tool. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a pair of dimensions inside this object or they can go outside the object as well and you can use the move tool to move them around um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just click and drag a mouse across the whole thing I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna click make group and what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this desk so now we have an object in SketchUp for our desk and the other thing that you can probably do if you want to is we're going to go ahead and put these two dimensions on a dimension layer so that we can turn them on and off. And so remember we put all of these objects in this group. So I'm going to double click in this group and I'm just going to do a shift click on these two objects. And I'm going to create a layer and call it dimensions. And you can see how when I have these two things selected, they show up in my entity info saying I have two linear dimensions selected. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to select the option for dimensions. And so when I select the op when I select the option for dimensions, now I can come in here and I can turn those on and off really quickly. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some dimensions over here as well so that I've got kind of an idea of how large everything is in this model. 
So, and specifically what I'm concerned about in this case is I'm concerned about the distances between doors and walls. So specifically, I'm concerned about where the desk is gonna go, how much room I'm gonna have over there, that sort of thing. So I've got my desk in here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'll put these dimensions on the dimensions layer as well so you can turn all of the dimensions on and off really quickly using the layers option. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an object for my sofa. And so my sofa, in this case, my sofa gives me a set of dimensions on the website. So in this case, I can see that my dimensions are 36 inches high by 82 inches wide by 36 inches deep. And so for the sake of what we're doing right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a rectangle with those dimensions. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle with the dimensions 82 inches comma 36 inches. And you can see if you come in here and measure it, this is gonna be 82 inches long, this is gonna be three foot deep or 36 inches deep. And so I'm gonna go ahead and reverse this so that the white face is showing up and I'm gonna add a piece of 3D text that says sofa. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I add a pair of dimensions that are gonna go inside this object and I'm gonna add them to that dimensions layer. So I'll go ahead and I'll select these, I'll put them on the dimensions layer We'll turn them back on for a second, and what we'll do is we'll just do the same thing. We'll drag a box across this whole thing. We'll make it a group, and we'll call it Sofa. And so one other thing I want to do in this model really quick is I want to go back inside this group, and I want to add an object for the uh, baseboard heater register. And so what I'm going to do here is that baseboard heater is 28 inches long. So I'm gonna draw a line that's 28 inches, or it's 28 inches from the end of the wall. And then it's three inches out. And what I measured was that it's 25 inches off of this other wall. And the other way you could do this is you could use the tape measure tool to create some, um, some guidelines instead of drawing the lines along this face right here. So if you wanted to, you could activate the tape measure tool um, make sure the little plus is showing up next to your uh, tape measure icon, but you could also just draw a guideline that's 25 inches down right here. And then you could use this to draw in the rest of your baseboard register if you wanted to. And probably what I would do in this case is even within this group, I would make another group and call it baseboard. And so we're gonna do this one more time for the bookcase. So the bookcase, in this case is 25 and 3 quarters by 12 and a half. And you can see how that comes in a little too big for the bookcase. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the scale tool. So I'm just gonna click on it, tap the S key, single click on this corner piece, and then move this over so that it scales it down. And then I'll kind of center it a little bit on this on this face that I created. It doesn't have to be perfect. And so now what I can do is I can come in here and I can start figuring out where I'm gonna put everything. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn my dimensions layer off and I'm gonna go ahead and take this sofa and start fi trying to find a place for it. And so one thing that you're gonna wanna do when you do this is first of all, you may want to either hide or delete the floor um, just because it seems like it was kind of merging with that face. So in this case, I just right clicked on it and I clicked hide. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my sofa in here and uh, kind of try to place it along this wall. And one thing that you're gonna wanna do when you're doing this, I'm gonna go to back to a straight up and down view. But one thing you're gonna wanna do when you're doing this is you're gonna wanna move this along the axes. So um, what you don't wanna do is you don't really wanna click and just start randomly like moving around. And since everything's 2D, it's not as big of a deal. But first of all, it's not very precise. And second of all, sometimes you can accidentally move this up and down instead of on this flat axis. And and so it's a lot better if you're doing something like this to do something like using the move tool to click on this point and moving this object along the red axis and then along the green axis. And so what you can do is you can take this and you can align it 
using inferencing. So like for example, if I'm over here and I want this to line up with the top of this baseboard piece right here, um, you're gonna wanna move that along an axis and hold the shift key. So you're gonna wanna move it along the green axis and hold the shift key to lock it to that axis. Or the other trick you can use is you can also tap the left or right arrow keys on your keyboard and that'll lock this to an axis. So if you tap the right key and you have the move tool active, that'll lock this to the red axis. Or if you tap the left key, what it'll do is it'll lock you to the green axis. So that's another quick way to move things around in your model. But what you're gonna wanna do is you're just gonna wanna start lining things up and taking a look at the way that they work. So like for example, one thing that's gonna be important here is I want to know that I have a two and a half inch trim piece over here. And so I'm just gonna draw a line right here. But basically, you just need to remember that in spaces like this because I've got this sofa over here and it's actually gonna overlap with this trim piece. So that's something to kind of be aware of. And you may wanna go ahead and um, and draw that in around your door so that you have an idea that it's there. So you can see how if I put my sofa here with my baseboard, it's actually gonna to be too long and it's gonna hang over the face of that trim. And so what I can do is instead, I can move that up and use the rotate tool and actually you don't need to rotate it. Um, but what I can do is I can move my desk over here and take a look and see how well that fits. And so you can see how when I do this, even if I'm like, lined up with the baseboard, I've got a little gap in here. So this actually fits a lot better along this wall. And so you can use this to kind of place things and start getting a feel for where everything goes. So I also have to find a new place for my bookcase. So maybe something I could try is I could line this bookcase up with this wall. I could move the sofa over here and then something to be aware of in the future is I kind of want to have a TV on this wall at some point. And so maybe what I want to think about is moving this bookcase over. And so you can see how once you get this set up with groups and everything else, then you can start getting an idea of the way all of this is going to work. And one of the things that you need to be aware of here is the door. So what you can do is you can draw your door in here. So you can see where that's gonna sit with your door swing. So you can see how, you can see how figuring out where this bookcase is gonna go can be a little bit of a problem, but we can start figuring that out using, using this layout method. So that's how you can kind of lay everything out in two dimensions. And this video is already getting a little bit long, so I'm probably gonna break this up into two different videos. In the next video, we're gonna talk about modeling all of this in three dimensions to really kind of get a feel for the space and uh, start adding colors and figuring out exactly what everything's gonna look like, that sort of thing. That's where I'm gonna end today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. I know it got a little bit long and uh, we only kind of stayed in two dimensions for this one and we're going to move into three dimensions in the next one and do a little bit more room layout um, but if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week if you like what i'm doing on this channel please consider supporting me on patreon every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month so make sure to check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys